What's good y'all, your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out Damian Priest has been a better world champion than Cody Rhodes. Now, this is a very interesting uh, conversation to have um, in comparison between each other. Cody Rhodes title reign for me personally, it's been okay. But when you think about who he beat to get the title, that epic title reign, a title reign that will probably never see broken again for a very long time and roman reigns having a title for a damn near you know over three years you, him overcoming that finishing the story you would think there would be something to really follow it up you know just like a, a line of opponents that would make sense and to really build up the title reign unfortunately outside of aj styles um at the beginning it's been kind of lackluster i know he had a few with logan but we know why that happened i mean in hindsight it's it shouldn't have happened but we know why it happened because of the saudi show so you know it's kind of hard to take that for you seriously and now we're back with the bloodline stuff and not to say that it's bad but the really integral part of this whole bloodline feud again now is jacob fatu being added to the to the equation and obviously the prospect of roman reigns coming back so i do think there's a possibility that his title reign you know could pick up with the whole randy orton feud i think that could possibly be something and then obviously the rock one and coming back to try to challenge cody i think it will pick up then but right now outside of aj styles it hasn't really been much of much of anything to write about now on the damian priest side of things it has been more enjoyable you know obviously the the surrounding arc involving damian priest is him turning babyface ultimately leaving judgment day they've been planting those seeds and uh you know now with gunther you know a really top heel that he's gonna have to overcome the odds on and the you know whole drew uh cm punk thing with the addition of seth Rollins. there's been a lot of moving pieces that have put more spotlight on the world heavyweight championship and the title reign itself um, some solid matches with Damian Priest as well. I think if you had to look on paper, I would I would choose Damian Priest's title reign has been better in a sense because of just the surrounding pieces outside of, you know, that's not really involving him, but the pieces around him and, uh, you know, possibilities of where things can go. I would go with Damian Priest's title reign being the more enjoyable one. Both of them aren't bad, but in comparison... I would probably choose his Damian Priest's, but we'll see how things play out after SummerSlam. Should be a very interesting video. We're going to get right into this one, and let's see what's going on here, man. The four-month mark for both Cody Rhodes and Damian Priest as world champions in WWE. Both of them won their respective world championships on WrestleMania 40 Sunday, but it's actually been a tale of two completely different stories with two totally different circumstances. Cody Rhodes' WWE Championship win was meant to signal his arrival as WWE's new number one guy, while mm -hmm. Damian Priest was thought of as nothing more than a transitional champion. Nobody doubted Damian Priest was deserving of his spot. It had more to do with the fact that Drew McIntyre, Gunther, and Seth Rollins were all hotter at the time. Since Clash at the Castle was set to be held in Drew McIntyre's home country of Scotland, it seemed all but guaranteed that Damian Priest was going to lose his World Heavyweight title. But in a bit of a twist, Triple H and his creative team decided to use that setting and moment to feel the hottest rivalry in wrestling today, mm -hmm. Drew McIntyre versus CM Punk. After that, the transitional champion argument had little merit to it. Once Senor Money in the Bank turned into El Campeon, he's become better than ever, possibly the best he's ever been. We would go as far as to argue that he has been the better of the two world champions so far, even better than Cody Rhodes. Why do we think so? Let's get into it. Very Stand interesting back. take. There's a new wrestling Very interesting group. take. Check out Brain Buster. The surrounding Damian Priest and Cody Rhodes' world title reigns couldn't be any different. Mm -hmm. Context is key, so we should acknowledge the fact that the expectations for Cody Rhodes as WWE champion were sky high while the expectations for Damian Priest, not so much. That's People a fair, don't really expect fair point. much from so-called transitional champions, so that alone made it a bit easier for Damian Priest to surpass the hopes that people had for his title reign. 
With that said, we don't want to discredit Damian Priest because he's actually had to overcome a few hiccups in his short title reign so far. The story is being told that while Damian Priest has been the undisputed Judgment Day leader in Rhea Ripley's absence, he doesn't actually want the Judgment Day's help in his matches. Despite mm -hmm. this, every title defense of his has been riddled with some interference or the other, leading to a direct conflict of interest. Yep. As Damian Priest continues to prove himself as a legitimate world champion, he hasn't been happy with the interferences in his title matches. He's hardly been a bad guy since becoming... And that's, I think, that's... And I, I like that he made that point. He made the point that not many people expected much from Damian Priest's title reign because uh, people expected him to be tr a transitional champion anyway. Um, but with Cody, like I said, beating Roman Reigns and beating that legendary title reign, you automatically had so many high expectations for Cody that, you know, it was one of those things where, you know, you would hope, you know, he would have a good line of opponents, fresh opponents to really, you know, encapsulate him being the guy. And even though he's still the top babyface, it's just outside of the AJ Styles feud, the Logan Paul thing was obviously for the Saudi show. And now we're back with the bloodline stuff. It's really just been the AJ Styles feud that's been really, you know, really good to, you know, watching and was pretty entertaining. But that's it. At least with Damian Priest, the whole idea of him wanting to do this on his own, wanting to be that fighting champion without the help of the Judgment Day, is ultimately creating a story of him leaving the Judgment Day or the Judgment Day betraying him. So it's, it's more layers to his title reign and the problems that he's dealing with or going to deal with than it is with Cody as of right now or has it what it's been since WrestleMania, honestly. In World Heavyweight Champion, and it's reflected in the fact that he gave Drew McIntyre a world title shot in Scotland and Seth Rollins a shot as soon as he returned. For the Seth Rollins match in particular, there was the added stipulation that if Rollins lost, he wouldn't get the challenge for the World Heavyweight Championship as long as Damian Priest was the champion. When Seth Rollins got screwed at Money in the Bank thanks to CM Punk, Damian Priest changed the gentleman's agreement to give Seth Rollins another shot at the title should he retain at SummerSlam. So mm -hmm. yes, while there is always that asterisk around Damian Priest's title defenses, it hasn't objectively been his fault. He just so happened to benefit from the never-ending crossfire yeah. of Drew McIntyre and CM Punk. He has never shied away from a challenge, and that's why he's managed to earn the respect of so many people. So what, you want a shot at the world title? just three years after he debuted on the main roster. The man's been wrestling for like nine years and he already feels like he's a 20 year veteran. Even if he isn't going to get a super long championship reign, history will look back on his title run favorably. Damian Priest has always been a reliable guy and when the opportunity came, he truly stepped up to the plate. It certainly helps that Raw has been hotter than SmackDown for a minute. And but that's, let's now explore that's why important Cody too. Rhodes title run could have been better. And just a reminder, this is only our opinion. With Cody Rhodes as WWE Champion, the idea was always to give him a run worthy of his coronating moment. After all, we're talking about someone from wrestling royalty. Someone who made the bold decision of leaving his comfortable paycheck in WWE to make a name for himself. Someone whose years of hard work finally came to fruition. Mm -hmm. For two years, Cody has been positioned as THE guy. Yeah. He's the one who has chosen to end Roman Reigns' unprecedented run as Universal Champion. But where has it fallen short for him in the three months post-WrestleMania? This isn't a knock on Cody's popularity because he's much more popular than Damian Priest is mm -hmm. and will likely be for many years to come. Perhaps it has to do with the incredibly high demands that comes with winning the most prestigious prize in the industry. It doesn't help that he had to follow one of the best championship reigns of all time either. Yeah. That plus the popularity he has occurred over the last eight years automatically puts him in a position where people expect a lot more from him than they would for a guy like Damian Priest. This is very true. In terms of his title reign, it hasn't been bad, but it hasn't been turbulent or exciting either. The biggest issue is that it kind of seems like there's no major plan for his title reign outside of Roman Reigns and The Rock. There we go. With Roman Reigns, there's the trilogy match. And there we go. Simple as that. That uh, he he knocked once the rock said after Monday the the raw after mania he came out there and he wanted to hold the championship belt. He said this feels nice. Once he said 
When I come back, our story begins. Oh, you knew. It didn't matter. It did it 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 eliminated the the real possibility of him ever losing because if there was anybody that was going to ultimately try to take the title back from uh from Rome uh from Cody, it would be either Roman or The Rock. Not saying that I want that to happen, but those are the only viable options. Yes, of course, a few with Randy Orton with mm, chef's kiss can't wait for it to happen but even then it still doesn't eliminate the possibility of cody losing because i just don't see him losing i don't especially when we know the rock wants to have that match that's on the table unless they just completely forgot about it which i doubt it that's money come on and he just said it who wouldn't want to see a Roman Reigns versus Cody one more time for the trilogy? What? Ah, yeah. Yeah. That's why it also takes away the idea. Uh, it takes away a little bit of that excitement because you know, you know, once The Rock comes back, oh, no, it's up. It, it's go time. So uh, yeah, that that I'm glad he made that point there too. That's a very important point. In a rematch that writes itself, <laughs> So that's going to be the biggest milestone of Cody's title reign, assuming it happens in the coming months. And then there was the tease of The Rock versus Cody Rhodes when The Rock said on the Raw after WrestleMania just 40 said it. that their story was just beginning. That kind of revealed a couple things. Firstly, barring any major injury, yeah. Cody Rhodes is almost certainly going to be WWE champion for a full year. Yeah, this for sure. very surprising because long championship reigns have become the norm in the Triple H era. It makes sense anyway. Nor should he lose. He just beat the longest reigning WWE champion we've seen in the past 20 plus years. Cody wasn't going to lose. He's going to hold the championship until next year's WrestleMania. At that point, then he could possibly lose. But he's not losing anytime soon. He, he's not losing for the rest of 2024. Not the title, at least. I can tell you that now. So, hey, When you build a star like Cody for two years... Why just give him a short, meaningless run? Nope. But the second thing that we got from that Rock Cody interaction is that WWE really has only two major benchmark moments planned for his championship run. Yep. The rest seems to be filler and it's kind of showing just three months in. Yeah. The AJ style matches were good, especially the first one. Yeah. But the second one did not have to end the way it did. It was a disappointing end to their feud. <clears throat> Seriously, of all freaking things, Hollow steel steps are what broke AJ Styles and forced him to say I quit? <laughs> Come on! Triple H's approach involves a consistent, structured way of storytelling with the aim of a bigger payoff, but the trade-off for this is that it involves a lot of predictability. The yeah. game is in it for the long haul, and to his credit, it's one of the biggest reasons why WWE is red hot right now. That's why we saw the Bloodline feud, the six-man tag team match at Money in the Bank, and Cody getting pinned by Solo Sokoa. Mm -hmm. It's all likely ending up to Roman Reigns' big return. Yes. The strategy seems to be to occupy Cody with one feud for a few months. This could work, but a bit more needs to be done to build up excitement for it. The best example of this is his match against Solo Sokoa at SummerSlam. Solo not being ready is a different story, but it's kind of disappointing to see Solo in that spot instead of Roman Reigns in the main event of SummerSlam. It's not a good idea to build a championship reign off of just two major matches, yeah. especially when the title run is possibly going to last for a whole year. We've seen Cody in two rivalries so far, and it hasn't been the most exciting championship reign. It's not his fault, but WWE needs to start putting more effort into the feuds that we know Cody will win, because if not, his run... And that's, that's hopefully when Randy comes into the picture will continue to be underwhelming. The main reason why Damian Priest has arguably been a better champion is that the expectations weren't as high for him to begin with. But his character at the moment is also progressing a lot more than Cody's, so that makes it mm -hmm. exciting knowing that he could potentially be slotted into becoming a good guy and potentially splitting from the Judgment Day. That's, there that's seems the to be thing. a plan in place for how the rest of the year could go for Cody, but it's not very clear. It could just be him feuding with Roman Reigns and Randy Orton, a War Games match at Survivor Series, mm -hmm. and then a different rivalry for the Royal Rumble. Yeah. Either way, given that people want more out of him as a WWE champion, 
The solution is simply to intensify the rivalries by adding big moments and big stakes with room for a few unexpected surprises time and again. It's hard to create moments where you genuinely think that Cody is going to lose his title, but they've managed to do it so many times before with Roman Reigns, mm -hmm. so it's not impossible. Cody having a character change altogether makes no sense for the foreseeable future, mm -hmm. but there has to be more work put into it to get his character forward and make changes on that front too. The same Cody we've seen in the past two years won't be enough to sustain his popularity as WWE Champion. It's going to be interesting to see how history remembers Cody Rhodes' reign. Thank you for watching. And that's always been the thing. You know, it, it's tough. The chase is always better. It's usually the better part of a storyline. The chase, the chase, trying to win the championship. It's been a two-year journey. The chase has been better. There's been some bumpy roads. But hopefully, like I said, after SummerSlam, they can get some things going. The Randy Orton situation, get some things going, and hopefully it in, it gets better. That's the only thing I can say. Like I said, it's Damian Priest. His has been, in my opinion, objectively better as well. Um, just off the, the surrounding pieces around him and also what's happening with his character. Cody's been kind of lackluster. Not Cody's fault. It's just they've kind of wrote themselves into a corner where they kind of have to wait till things play out. And right now, it's it's been okay at best. So, we'll see how things play out after SummerSlam, man. But, y'all, comment down below. Let me know. How do y'all feel? Do y'all feel Damian Priest's title reign has been better than Cody's? Or do you feel like Cody's has been better than Damian Priest's so far? Or do you not care for both of their title reigns? I've seen some people say they don't care for neither title reign. Y'all let me know down below. But I appreciate all the love and support. Road to 150K. Appreciate y'all keeping with me. See you on the next one. Peace.